My wife and I, along with our daughter, recently drove our 2022 Rivian R1T from Colorado to Florida, a 5,000 mile round trip. We had a few concerns, naturally. Could we fit everything we wanted to take in the truck? Well, that was no problem at all. In fact, you could hardly tell we were on a road trip since everything was packed away neatly in the front, gear tunnel, and truck bed. We also wondered, can we make it across areas of the country where charging stations are sparse? That was definitely our biggest concern. With that in mind, I decided to charge the battery to a full 100%, even though I normally like to charge it to just 70%. Rivian suggests you do this to conserve the life of the battery, and I made sure we drove in the conserve mode. I also set our trip odometer to zero so we could see how many miles we would drive on this epic journey. After leaving our home in Boulder, Colorado at about 5.30 a.m., we headed east toward a set of chargers in Flagler, Colorado. So we, we've started our 4,000 mile round trip from Boulder, Colorado to Fort Lauderdale and we just made it our first 140 some miles and we stopped at a place called Flagler, Colorado, where there was an Electrify America uh, charging station, four different charging stations there. The first one had a blank screen, it was turned off. Um, the second one said the charger is not available. Uh, the third one, um, it wouldn't accept any payment. The card reader seemed to be off or frozen. Fourth one, the screen was actually frozen. They gave the readout from the last person that charged, but then you couldn't you couldn't do anything no matter what button you pushed. So thankfully we have 177 miles left, um, according to the dashboard, and we are going to Colby, Kansas, which is according to the map 104 miles away. So we should have plenty of energy left to get there and hope that that charging station and I think it's at a Walmart Super Center. We'll be uh, ready to go and we'll be able to charge up. To be honest, I think a few of the chargers probably did work in Flagler, but since it was my first time to charge somewhere other than my house, I really didn't know what I was doing. Along the trip, I learned that I could begin the charge from my Electrify America app, but I didn't realize that at the time. Thankfully, we had plenty of charge to get us further down the road to Colby, Kansas. All right, well, it looks like the chargers in Colby, Texas, not Colby, Texas, Colby, Kansas, are working. Um, my battery is currently at 14%, and it says we're going to need to be here for, I thought it said something like an hour, 69 minutes, there it is, 69 minutes left. So this is our first charge um, that we've done on this road trip. And we'll see how accurate that time is. It's 1048 right now. So we'll see. We spent a little over an hour wandering around the Walmart and Colby, stocking up on a few snacks, and then... All right, so we're at 88%, and I think I'm gonna pull. I'm not sure if something bit me or what, but I stopped recording myself rather abruptly. From Colby, we continued on for a few hours to a Casey's General Store in Salina, Kansas, where we got our next charge. Hey, so this is our second time filling up. We've driven about 450 miles and we stopped and uh, we were at about 14% and I've got it up to 8%. So now we're going to hopefully get to somewhere around Kansas City on this charge, fill up again or recharge again and then make our way down to um, Springfield, Missouri tonight. So here we are and we're in Salina, Kansas or Salina, Kansas. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word. We did make it to Kansas City and of course we had to get some Kansas City barbecue at a place we found called Joe's Barbecue, which coincidentally was right across the street from a place that offers foot massage. The placement of these two businesses immediately put the catchy tune Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage in our heads. Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage! Jones Barbecue and Foot Massage! While we were enjoying the barbecue, but not a foot massage. We charged the Rivian at a Barnes & Noble, which ended up being completely free. In Kansas City, we made our way down to Springfield, Missouri, simply because our daughter Chloe has a few friends who live in Springfield that she wanted to say hi to. Hey guys, we're back on the road again in the Rivian. Um, now passing to Paul. So that's my daughter Chloe. Um, so I wanna talk about last night, we drove into Springfield, Missouri, and it was, Definitely stressful the last little bit um, because chargers are getting fewer, farther between, 
and we stayed at a friend's house last night who lived a little bit out of Springfield. So by the time we got to their house, I think I had maybe 30 miles left and it might have been just a few miles less. So, and it was raining and um, stressed out, but I got there and I plugged into their 110 outlet and through the night it gave us an extra 20 miles. So we woke up with 50 miles left. And so this morning we went to a come and go because I searched in Springfield and that looked to be the um, one of the fastest ones in Springfield. Turned out to be one of the most expensive ones in Springfield too because the parking cost almost $20 and the charging was almost 30. So altogether it was 57, 93 for a two hour charge. But it took us from 50 miles all the way up to 320 plus how many ever it had when we first got in here. So we've um, learning a bit about looking for parking fees um, and just realizing that the faster chargers of course are going to be quite a bit more expensive. So today now we're on our road, we're on the road to where are we at? Birmingham, Alabama, I think we're is our destination. We're yeah. heading toward Birmingham. And the Rivian, when we got in here, warned us that there were no fast chargers. But that's why we're using the apps. We're using a better route planner. We're using um, PlugShare. And we are seeing that there are some chargers on the way. How fast they are, we're not sure. So, so begins the adventure today, day two. So I was gonna mention I wanted to mention a few things that I like about driving the Rivian. Um, because as we drive along, we're noticing things we don't love and things we, we do love. The thing I don't love is that, and I think I'm going to make a service ticket, is that we hear wind coming from the corner somewhere of the passenger side door. Uh, my side is super quiet, uh, but there's road noise coming from over there and it just seems like something's not sealed like it should be. Um, but I love, I love the two screens here because this gives you this big wide view and you can actually see what the train looks like from a bird's eye view as we're driving along so that's kind of fun um, but then in the middle this, this uh, console right in front of me I have that zoomed in view and then to the left and I have a little bit zoomed out so you really have three perspectives of um, where your car is at in relation to space and um, yeah, I love the rear view mirrors and the, the side view mirrors because if there's a car in the blind spot, a little light lights up. That's probably not unique to Rivian, but that's been kind of nice. <laughs> okay. All right, so we are in, we're in Alabama. Um, we're out in Alabama. Leeds, Alabama. We're in Leeds, Alabama out, at an outlet mall, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna catch you up with what we did um, yesterday. So we took off from Springfield, Missouri and we headed south and we knew it was going to be sort of a charger desert charger wilderness and it was um, we stopped in jonesboro and we found a charger downtown but it was only at, it was in like six kilowatts so it was super super slow so we looked ahead and realized we could also get down to where do we end up trying to figure out where we ended up charging Nashville? No. no. Memphis. 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 Oh yeah. So we um so we went to Memphis. So we went, you know, we got into Tennessee. Um in Memphis we found a Nissan car dealership. Yeah, that was good. Nissan, it was a great spot, um, friendly people. Mm -hmm. And um after we charged, we let it charge for I don't know, an hour or so. Yeah, about an hour. So we had supper. And I can't remember the kilowatt hours, but hopefully there's a we'll put a video in it of it here. And um, yeah, and then there was no charge. There was no like we had to pay anything. Yeah. We unplugged. Not and that we was, they never asked for credit card information or anything. So we got a free charge, and then we continued down to Mississippi, and ended up camping at a place called Tim, Tom, Tom Bigby Tom Bigby State, State, Park. State Park, and we reserved a site that had a um, thirty amp and 50 amp no 50 amp yeah 30 and a 50 amp outlet oh. at the campsite yeah so we plugged into the 50 amp and it kicked the breaker off after a while and then i started it back up again and we ended up getting i think 200 miles 200 we left the campsite this morning with 200 miles on it okay yeah and then we drove from there through um well we got into is there anything between mississippi and alabama no 
Now we drove from Mississippi to Alabama, and now we're going to continue on to um, Florida today, we hope. So this is day three. We'll check in again. So we're just south of Atlanta. Um, we found a Walmart Supercenter that had some Electrify America uh, charging stations and currently charging at 80 kilowatt hours. Um, so that feels good after um, the last few days running into chargers that were at one point had only six kilowatt hours and um, had some that were like 40 plus. And so they have one running at 80 is uh, feels like a luxury. So we're going to try to get a pretty big charge here, maybe charge even up to 100% um, or at least close to it because from here we're going to drive straight south, uh, head down to Claremont, Florida. Um, it's like, I think I recall, maybe 380, 390 miles. So we're going to have to do one more charge before we get, to, before we get down to Claremont. And um, this has just become kind of our, our thing to do when we fill up. We've uh, gone to Walmart, so we went to an outlet mall and just kind of walk around. And um, totally different, it's a totally different way of doing a road trip. Um, in the past, road trips meant just stopping at one convenience store after another, seeing the same stuff. And um, now there's more variety, and it kind of forces us to um, stop and smell the roses, and you know, go to a decent restaurant once in a while rather than just always doing fast food. So it's it's been a good journey. So we're coming close to the end of day three of this trip, and um, yeah. We'll check in again. So as we're charging, um, an older gentleman in a Toyota Tundra, not this one, but just happens to be another Toyota Tundra behind me, stopped and asked me what I thought of um, electric vehicles. And um, he was genuinely interested. And then he mentioned that his grandson is won a Tesla from Mr. Beast for um, being the 40 million subscriber. Today, I'm going to be giving my 40 million subscriber all 40 of these cars. We have a Porsche, a Chrysler, a Tesla with a custom 40 mil wrap on it. And uh, his grandson ended up selling it because uh, he didn't want an electric and bought himself a gas vehicle. So I thought that was pretty ironic that we uh, ran, into, ran into a guy that won the vehicle from Mr. Beast. Um, my son, 15 years old, loves Mr. Beast. So shout out to Mr. Beast, I guess. Driving a yellow vehicle makes you notice something. It makes you notice all of the other yellow vehicles out there on the road. And in our humble opinion, we think yellow is the best. Hey, so we're getting pretty close to the end of day three. We put on about 1,800 miles and um, we tried charge it. Well, we did charge a little bit um, just at the, can't remember the name of the town, but it was just uh, on the way out of Georgia into Florida. And we were at a Walmart charger that claimed it was supposed to get 350 kilowatt hours but it was giving us 35 so the charging was super slow so we just put on enough to make it down to um florida so we're can't remember the name of the town but we're somewhere in florida we're at a target and um this one also says it's supposed to do 350 but it's given us 149 kilowatt hours so we're going to go ahead and stay here and at least put enough on to uh, Get to our next campsite so we have a campsite uh, reserved in claremont that has a 50 watt or 50 amp receptacle and a 30 amp receptacle so we're going to plug in tonight and hope that we can get to 100 percent we did that we you know we tried last night but we didn't quite make it to 100 because the breaker cut off somewhere in the night but yeah so this is going at 150 watt hours that is not an electric engine over there. Um, anyway, um, probably won't check in tonight that I know of. But anyway, we'll uh, check back in again probably tomorrow morning. So we had another bit of a crazy night. Um, we didn't pull into our campsite until midnight. Well, we didn't even get to our campsite. We didn't get to the campground until midnight and the gate was shut and we didn't have the combination to get in the gate so 
we ended up going to a hotel. It was a, I think a home too by Hilton, something like that. And we, um, they had a charger and uh, the people inside didn't know much about it, but they said there was one out there. And in fact, the, the attendant or the, the hotel clerk came out and was looking at it and said it had been used before. So we plugged in and it gave us a whopping like six kilowatt hours. Um, so we ended up putting on maybe 30 miles of range during the night. So definitely not uh, great. And my, my brother lives in Claremont, so we went and saw him this morning, brought him and his kids some donuts. And then we found an outlet mall just a little south of Claremont and we've charged up. Um, I, I don't know what the, the cost is gonna be yet. I think it might be kind of expensive um, by the look of it. But we're now at almost 80%, so we have enough to make it the rest of the way to um, Fort Lauderdale. So that's where, that's, that's the end of the line for us. We're gonna drop our daughter off at college, and then we'll begin the journey home in a few days. All right, see ya. Okay, we are now on our trip home um, from Florida. We've gone a total of about 3,200 miles, and um, a lot of those miles were while we were in Florida. We, um, we ended up going all the way down to the southernmost point of the United States, um, a little spot in Key West, Florida. So we've been in Florida for about a week now, um, doing a little sightseeing. We dropped our daughter off to college. Um, Last night then we drove from Southern Florida up to Orlando area. My brother lives, um, lives near Orlando. And um, on our way up to my brother's place, um, I knew that he had a 30 amp outlet. So not, not a 50, but a 30. So on our way, or actually once I got to my brother's place, he thought he had an adapter, didn't have one. So we went to Lowe's and I bought a 50 amp to a 30 amp adapter thinking that hey it all looks exactly like the uh, Rivian plug it fits perfectly so we got to my brother's place and we plugged in and it didn't work and we tried a couple of different configurations just kind of plugging this in plugging that in and um, the adapter was plugged in and it didn't work and so I ended up plugging into my brother's um, 110 outlet just his garage outlet and of course that gives a little bit over a mile an hour to your charge time so that really wasn't gonna work and we did some searching on the internet and discovered that a travel trailer adapter which was is what this is does not work for electric cars and uh, my brother did some research and he said that he saw somewhere on some forum that you'd have to have like three different adapters to actually make it so you can charge a Rivian in a 30 amp outlet. And I, I suppose that's true for other electric cars as well. So I don't understand um, why that is, how that all works. I'm sure that if I did some reading, you could find out, but you can't do it. So that's unfortunate. It would have been really great because we've discovered a few of the campsites we've gone to. Um, some have had 50 amp outlets and it works great. We can charge overnight, but others just have a 110 and they have a 15 amp outlet and a 30 amp and the 15 amp is way too slow and then the 30 um, we're not able to use so i i don't know if you can even buy an adapter i don't think you can buy an adapter for rivian for 30 i might be wrong um, about that so uh, that started our trip off a little rockier than we thought because you know we traveled close to 300 miles from south florida up to the orlando area and um, we started off with 100 percent 320 miles we got to my brother's house we had about 20 miles left of charge so and there were really no chargers nearby because we really had put put all our hope that we'll just charge at his place so i ended up putting maybe 10 miles if that not even 10 maybe five or six extra miles on on the rivian and then we drove to a Publix supermarket which had a charger that only produced six or seven kilowatt hours so I made the uncomfortable decision of leaving our Rivian parked at the public supermarket all night long. It was a new Publix, um, new area, so it, you know everything it was well lit. So we decided why not, and I, I so we left it plugged in all night, and it gave us about an extra 100 miles. So then we got in the truck this morning, and we drove 
maybe a half hour to um, Okalala, Okala, Florida. And we first went to uh, Palm Chevrolet where um, we saw online on PlugShare that they had a charger. But we got there and what we're in, and we discovered what we've discovered other places as well that there might be a charger and this one was free but it didn't work. Um, we plugged in probably four or five times and every time it, you know the Rivian said um, try, unplug try again unplug try again so we tried that several times never got it to work and that's what we're discovering with some of these chargers is that a place will put them in but then nobody uses it that, that nobody that works there actually uses it so they don't understand it they don't even know that it's not working um, so we left there, we went to another um, place in Ocala called, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that city right or wrong, but um, my apologies if, we're not, if I'm not pronouncing that right. We went to a place called um, Electrify Garage. It was a, um, a service center, small um, you know, business owner service center that specializes in electric vehicles. Um, I don't know if he does, you know, they do maintenance and they provide, maybe they install chargers in your home garages, things like this. So they had a free charger out front. And we got there and there was a Tesla charging and the charge cable that we could have used was taped up with a bag over it. So it was also um, out of commission. Um, so we left there and we ended up going to a Target, which we have just left. In fact, it was a Target that we had visited on the way down. Um, we found our own comments where we said it was very fast and it was very fast for the first few minutes. Um, it was charging at almost 500 miles an hour and then I checked back just a few minutes later and discovered it was down to, I don't know, 90 miles an hour, something like that, 100 miles an hour. So we went back and unplugged and plugged in the, uh, the charger, the cable right next to it, and it shot us back up to 400 plus miles an hour and stayed there. So we were able to get pretty close to 300 miles of range on, and now we are traveling north and um, I think our destination right now is Nashville, Tennessee. Um, that would be about a 10 hour drive time without charging stuff. So I'm not sure if we'll make it. Um, we, we may just try to make it as far as we can and maybe find another campsite with the 50 amp plug because um, that does work pretty great. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the update for now. Um, I should mention that we did get to do a little camping in the Keys. Um, we, we camped out two nights. Um, the first night we were able to do like we had hoped we could do at every campsite. We were able to charge up to, on, to 100%, full charge, 100%. It's called Bahia Honda State Park, really beautiful park. All, almost down to Key West. Yeah, very near Key West. We, had, we did go down to Key West, like I mentioned, and um, Bahia Honda is just like an hour. Um, east, I guess you would say, of um, Key West. And uh, night, so the second night at Bihia, Bihia Honda, we went to another campsite that was right on the ocean, and it was just a beautiful campsite, maybe one of the most amazing places we've ever camped. Um, of course, we slept in the back of the truck, we had the tent over the truck, but that's the place where we discovered they didn't have a 50 amp, even though they said they did. Um, and again, that just points out that a lot of people, including ourselves, are, are just learning about really electricity when it applies to travel and cars. And maybe if you're, you've been using an RV a long time, you understand, you know, places will have 15 amp, 30 amp, 50 amp. But um, we're just getting into it. And I think sometimes even the people that run the camp don't know, you know, what outlets that they have. So it was a good experience, but we, were, we weren't able to charge up um, that night. So anyway. That's it for now. Okay. Well, yesterday we drove up from Claremont and we did arrive just a little south of Nashville. We are at a state park um, called Old what? Old Stone, Old Stone Fort. Fort. <laughs> Old Stone Fort. Um, we were joking, we call it Old Stale Fort State Park, but um, it's Old Stone Fort <laughs> State Park, State Park uh, just south of Nashville. Um, so I think we were on the road um, probably, I don't know, close to 15 hours yesterday. Um, I'm not sure how much of that was drive time because of course we did stop. We stopped at the Target. Um, we then stopped at a Walmart, had a really good charge. And then our third stop um, was at a uh, outlet mall um, somewhere northwest Atlanta, I think. 
and uh, got a good charge there and uh, it was a pretty quiet place um, closing time so not many people around and uh, and then we made the uh, the rest of the way to this state park and we plugged in overnight and uh, we arrived with around 14 percent and we're leaving with close to 70 percent and um, I don't know how many people that actually get a Rivian are actually going to use it to go camping but um, if you do it really is a great deal we um, we got a shower this morning um, had a place to plug in got water and really a very comfortable place to sleep it was about uh, 68 degrees last night so it could have been better and then you get to wake up in a beautiful surrounding so today um, I think we're gonna get to uh, maybe around Kansas City I think um, somewhere in that neighborhood and um, I think we've got maybe 18 hours until we get back to Boulder so we'd like to do a little bit more than half of that today would be great so we're a um, little bit a um, little bit on the north uh, not the east I'm sorry what am I talking about we're a little bit on the northwest side of Nashville I believe uh, um, just kind of got around the city, unfortunately, during rush, morning rush hour and um, had to stop at a Waffle House, of course, and because it just felt like the thing to do. Uh, being here in the south, um, Patty ordered grits and I ordered hash browns and eggs. And uh, man, the place was packed. Um, it's like the place to go. There was an Applebee's across the street, nobody there. Um, Panda Express, probably too early, nobody there, but everybody, everybody was at the Waffle House and it was it was great. We loved it. It's actually my first time going to a Waffle House. And we got a great charge here at Walmart, um, Electrify America, um, almost 100%. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna do all the way to 100. We're gonna go ahead and unplug and take off. But um, something about Electrify America, um, I'm, I'm glad they're here and all of that, but you know, we're gonna be going way over 4,000 miles on this trip. And so we've been to quite a few of these Electrify Americas. and. Um, there's always one that's not working. And um, I don't think I have ever walked up to it and for the charge to go completely seamless. Um, you're supposed to be able to hold up your digital wallet, you know, on my iPhone to the little RFID thing right here. And um, it's never worked first time. Um, I've had to reinitiate that charge a few times and um, sometimes it doesn't work at all and then I can go into the app and there's a place where you can swipe to start the charge and um, sometimes that'll work sometimes it'll say you need to unplug and plug back in um, so I mean I think I know what you're supposed to do by now we've like I said we've been to a few of these but something about it is just not smooth never maybe once on this trip it's gone looks like seamless but, uh, and that's the way it was today. It was hard to get the charge going, um, but we got it going and it has been fast. So I'm not gonna complain too much, even though I just got finished complaining, but um, it charged fast. We've been here an hour and we're almost at hundred percent. So I am grateful for that. But um, I am looking forward to somehow this experience being smoother than what it is. So anyway, here we are, Nashville. Not exactly what I had in mind when I decided I was gonna visit Nashville someday, but we're on a road trip, we're on our way through. So um, yeah, next we're gonna hopefully make our, make our way to Kansas City. As long as I'm complaining, I may as well continue. I can't understand why the native Rivian map app doesn't offer detailed information on charging stations. Why should I have to use an app like PlugShare or a better route planner to plan a road trip? I can't tell you how many times I tried tapping on a charger location to have the map do, well, Nothing. Oh, and we thought we had the best vehicle on the road until we ran into this guy. It's a boat that he has transformed into a car. And no, it doesn't do boaty things like float. It's just a car that looks like a boat. Regardless, we thought it was pretty cool. So we got to Topeka, Kansas last night. Um, it was a good, good day. Um, our last charge was at a Walmart and uh, somewhere near Kansas City, and it went pretty good. I mean, it went really good, actually, at that Walmart Supercenter. Um, uh, we were at Electrify America, and we were able to get it charged right away. Um, 
and it took my payment method just like that and everything worked as it's supposed to. Um, and then last night we pulled in here uh, to this campsite, um, Lake Shawnee, I believe it's called, Topeka, Kansas. And um, just as we were setting up, it began to rain and then it rained hard all night until about 3 a.m. So we didn't sleep that great, um, but kind of woke up at the normal time. And, uh, but one thing that I learned last night is um, we did plug into the 50 amp and then we set off the breaker. And then I remember um, from playing around on the menu screen that you can change the amount of amps that the, uh, the Rivian allows um, in. I don't know how to explain that because I don't fully understand it. But it was maxed out already at 48 at the default setting. And so I just dialed it down to 20 amps. Um, I was too tired to try anything else. Maybe I could have tried a little higher than that. But I thought, we'll go, I won't go all the way to 15, but I'll try 20. Um, and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't set off the breaker. Um, so we were able to charge through the night and um, we now have 162 miles. So I think we added about 100 miles of range last night while we camped here. Um, so pretty happy with that. But there is a, um, there's a place called Sharp Honda in here in Topeka and they claim that it's a free charger. So I think we're gonna check it out. It's a Sunday morning. Um, so I don't know if, uh, if that means it'll be closed or what, but we're gonna go try that out. All right, well, we did make it to um, that place called Sharp Honda in uh, Topeka, and it's actually doing a really great job um, getting a really good charge. I came here with 50%, and now we're at about 74%. My goal is to get about 250 miles of range on it because um, there's a Walmart about 205 miles from here that I think we might have stopped at on the way through and now on our way but now as we go on our way back toward Colorado um, so we actually I could unplug now but um, uh, my wife Patty was here when I left but um, I, I decided to go for a walk and took a big walk um, you know I don't know maybe I don't know how big a walk it is mile two miles I got back and now she apparently went on a walk so Maybe we'll end up with even more of a charge than um, what we had previously planned. But um, yeah, anyway, um, we're on our way back and we're about ready to go through the rest of Kansas and Eastern Colorado. This is where the charging gets a little um, little dicey, but um, we made it through the first time and so I anticipate we'll make it back just fine too. So I had to try something. Knowing that we'd be going through areas with lots of mosquitoes and bugs, I wanted to see how helpful it would be to stretch a piece of plastic wrap over the front of the Rivian. I'll let you know how that experiment worked out at the end of this video. So what happened, Paul? <laughs> so at that, the last charge, um, according to how far away it was from Topeka to Hayes and um, how much range I put on, we were going to have 50 extra miles. And it's funny, there was an old, and what we're now, we don't have 50 extra miles. We're actually down to 21 right now, and we still have five miles to go. So we're going to end up with maybe 15, maybe even 10, if it keeps on going at that ratio. Because we, like I said, we were going to have 50 extra miles. Now we're down to only 20. We're not, we're not even there yet. And um, I should have listened to two things. I should have listened to this old guy came up to me and was talking about uh, what I thought of the Rivian. And he reminded me about, I'm gonna be going uphill all the way to Colorado from Topeka. Topeka, he said 4,000 feet. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually that much elevation gain um, between Topeka and Denver. It might be, actually. I'm not sure how high Topeka is. Um, and uh, also, the Rivian did say, it said, hey, you're not gonna have enough range to make it to Hayes. <laughs> But according to the numbers, it's like, well, yeah, I am. I'm going to have 50 extra miles. Um, so why, why it didn't, you know, why it said I had 50 when actually I only have like 19 now? Um, I'm not sure that I understand. Um, but that's what's happening. And so now we're down to 3.7 miles. Um, I do think we're going to make it, but uh, we're not there yet. So um, hopefully, hopefully we'll make it too. 
Walmart Supercenter, and I think it's an Electrify America, and we'll be able to get this charge. But we haven't been, we haven't been at this kind of spot yet. We've got down to 30 miles. Um, I think we got down to 20 some miles when we went to my brother's place in, in Florida. In two miles, take exit 159. <laughs> but, um, we've never gotten it down this slow before. And um, when I first told Rivian, when I first picked the Rivian up a few weeks ago, and I told them we were going to be going through Kansas. She told me, she said, do your research because, yeah, it's kind of a charger um, wilderness desert out that way. And on the way out to Florida, no problem because we were going downhill the whole time. But now we're going uphill constantly, very gradual, but enough to make a difference in how much, how much range we actually have. So it's getting hot in here. We turned off the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. Enough. It's getting warm. We're not going to open the windows. We don't want to create drag. <laughs> so it's 102 degrees outside. Um, it's probably, we just turned it off and it feels like it's already 85 in here. It went from 70 to 85. Just like that. Um, anyway. But we're almost there. We're almost there. I think we're going to do it. 1.8 miles. I think it can do it. All right. We just pulled in. 14 miles left. And uh, hopefully... Even though this is um, Electrify America, um, and it seems like it's always it's always a gamble, <laughs> um, hopefully it works smoothly. Well, as expected, um, the one I pulled up to was unavailable once I got out. It was listed as unavailable. And there's a Mustang plugged into the one that is available, and they're doing um, some kind of... Clothing swap. Clothing swap. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're at the 350 charger, and the, the, one, the one that's supposedly available is 150. Um, I had pulled up to a 350 as well, but that one was unavailable. So once they're done with the clothing swap um, and the little conference they're having here, we'll pull up to this 350 and hopefully get a charge. Okay, a little update. Um, we finished our charge. We are at 89%, um, 297 miles of range. Um, that only cost us $21. So that was a really good charge. Um, I think we were probably in there for about an hour, um, maybe a little bit more than an hour walking around Walmart. But yeah, 13 miles to 297 now. So that feels pretty good. So now we are heading toward Colorado. I think we have one more charge maybe in Kansas. And it turns out I was right about the bugs. Just look at this windshield. We cleaned it off several times, of course, but it would always be covered in bugs just a few minutes later. So in the next segment, I am unfortunately chewing away on a piece of gum. When I was growing up, my dad managed a Woolworths store, and I always remember him saying that he didn't allow his employees to chew gum while they were on the job. He said he just didn't like the way it looked. In fact, he would fire any would-be gum chewer right on the spot if they dared to chew. I can now see why. Okay, we just made it back to Colorado and we are doing our last charge of the whole trip. Um, by the time we get back home to Boulder, we will have put over 5,000 miles on the Rivian. And uh, I thought I'd try this charger again because we tried this charger on the way out and that was before I knew what I was doing. So um, I assumed everything wasn't working because it wouldn't it wouldn't take my scan when I held on to that, when I held it over the RFID reader. Well, I've since learned you can do it from the app. And so I was able to start the charge from the app and it's going quickly. So we're gonna to try to get probably 250 miles of charge at least. Um, before we go. And uh, I wanted to point this sign out though because uh, I was hoping this, this diner would be open, but it's closed for cleaning. But I noticed on the sign they have Key West, 2,084 miles. And um, that's where we went on this trip. We went all the way down to Key West. All right, we are in Denver. We made it. And uh, we've got 106 miles of range left. Um, only 33 miles to go. After um, our last little update, we. Um, we didn't stay there long just because the restaurant wasn't open and we were hoping to get some ice cream. So we drove another half hour, found another charger. Um, this time it was a charge point and it worked well. We just put a few extra on just to make sure we could make that extra climb into Denver. And um, we ended up 
wanting to go to Wendy's and get a burger. We hadn't eaten really all day except for some noodles we made this morning at the campsite and snacks all day. So we had a burger and some ice cream and half hour we'll be back in Boulder. It's been a really great trip and um, we're super amazed that this electric truck made it 5,000 miles. That's the triple odometer right now is 4,999.9. 5,000. Well, thank you for watching all the way to the very end. Um, we are just now at the stop sign to our place. Um, we are now at 5,025 miles. That's for the total trip from garage back to the garage. And um, the total trip from pretty much when we headed back home from Florida ended up being 2,000. And 67, which means we did do a quite a bit of driving around in Florida, and we actually took a little bit longer way down. But um, I won't quite close out the video yet. I do want to share with you how much we spent on charging and give you a little rundown on that. And so I'll close out. I can even go in the garage. See the kids take over when we leave. As promised, here's how much we spent on charging during the travel days of our round trip from Boulder to Fort Lauderdale. I didn't record how much we spent while we traveled around Florida going down to the Florida Keys and such. So for the Colorado to Florida trip, here is our charging cost broken down by day. Day one, Colby, Kansas Walmart, we spent $19.06 at the Selena, Kansas Casey's. We spent $13.94 and at the Kansas City Barnes & Noble, we had a completely free charge. Day two, at the Springfield, Missouri come and go, we spent $57.93, which was our most expensive charge of the whole trip. In Jonesboro, Arkansas, we spent $1.38, and that was a super slow charger that we just quit and went on to the next place, which was South Haven, Mississippi, where we charged at a car dealership for completely free. And then we continued on to the Tom Bigbee State Park, which also was free, and I'm not calculating in the costs that we paid just to camp there. Day three, at the Leeds Alabama Outlet Mall, we spent $38.06. At the Atlanta Georgia Walmart, we spent $19.56. At the Gainesville Florida Target, $35. And at the Claremont Florida Hotel, it was free, but we didn't get much of a charge. Day four, at the Orlando Florida Outlet Mall, we spent $22.37. And at the Fort Lauderdale Target, we had a free charge and I think there was some sort of problem with the machine, but we did get a great free charge. So the grand total for our trip down to Florida was $207.30. For our return trip from Florida, Colorado, here were our charging costs, again broken down by day. Day one, Claremont, Florida Publix, we spent $17.83. Gainesville, Florida Target, $42.57. Cordell, Georgia, Walmart, $13.23. Calhoun, Tennessee Outlet Mall, $19.26. And then the Old Stone Fort State Park, Tennessee, we had a free charge. Day two, at the Clarksville, Tennessee Walmart, we spent $23.82. At the Fairview Heights, Missouri Dollar General, $16.53. At the Boonville, Missouri Walmart, $27.52. And at the Shawnee Lake, Kansas Campground, we had a free charge. And then day three, at the Topeka, Kansas Sharp Honda, again, we had a free charge. Um, Hayes, Kansas Walmart, $21.83. Colby, Kansas Walmart, $16.26. At the Flagler, Colorado Restaurant was $13.53. And that's the charger that I didn't think was working on the way down. And then at the Lyman, Colorado Wendy's, we spent $5.78 for a total of $218.16. So the grand total for the round trip from Colorado to Florida and back to Colorado was only $425.46. Oh, and here's the result of using that plastic cling wrap on the front of our Rivian. I'm definitely going to do this again on our next road trip. Would you like to see more videos about our Rivian? Please let me know by liking and subscribing and feel free to post any questions that you might have. Thanks.